Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to talk about the Word of God. Is that all right with you? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray our prayer of faith. Say, I come in the name of Jesus with a teachable, reachable spirit. Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me, show me the truth. Amen? Now we're responsible. Amen? All right. I'm going to talk about Luke 19, 11. Luke 19, 11. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Now, in order to lose something, you've got to have it first. So we're going to have to start from the beginning a little bit. Amen? Now, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Well, he's not talking about a person with two eyes, two ears, a mouth, and a head. No, he's talking about his character, God's nature. Amen? So what did man lose? Well, man lost God's kingdom, God's love, and God's image. Well, what's God's image? What's God like to you? Well, according to the scriptures in 1 John 4, 16, God is love. I know it's hard to see that and feel that sometimes because of things that are going on in people's lives right now. But I'm here to encourage you, God never changed his mind on anybody. So with that truth, we can be set free from worrying about does God love me. And actually, the scriptures talk about God loved me first. You know, when I was searching for the things of God, I said, Lord, I got to love you more. I got to love you more. I got to trust you more. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me, I loved you first, son. Because, you know, love proved itself. When it hung on that cross. Amen? That was love to the ultimate. So when man fell, he lost more than his clothes. Come on, somebody tell me, well, pastor, he didn't have any clothes. Right? If somebody's listening to me, he didn't have any clothes, right? But what did he lose? He lost the kingdom of God. Amen? He lost fellowship. He lost God's image, God's likeness. He took on the nature of his enemy, which is sin. Anybody ever sin? Don't raise your hand, but me too. But thank God to Jesus who took that sin, took our infirmities, took our diseases, and by his wounds, I'm free now. Amen? I'm free to not sin. Now, you might sin, but if you sin, you sin with your body. You don't sin with your spirit. But that don't give you an excuse to sin. Please don't hear what I'm saying. The pastor says it's all right to go sin. I'm not saying that. Amen? But we're free from that because of what Jesus did. We don't get what we deserve. I thank God I don't get what I deserve. I get what Jesus deserved because he's Lord, Master, Savior. Amen? You can't earn it. It's a given freedom. Amen? When man fell, he started living for himself rather than the one who created him in his likeness. Man gave away the truth of life and started living the lie of selfishness. Now Now it's all about what I'm going through rather than what Jesus went through. We should never allow what we're going through matter more what Jesus did for us. I mean, God didn't just send his son because we're a bunch of sinners and we need to get to heaven as soon as possible. Please tell me you just didn't pray a prayer to get to heaven. No, we prayed a prayer to get heaven back in us. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Where did the kingdom come to? In man. God created man from the dust of the earth. Amen. So the kingdom of God comes back into man. Amen. Hope you got that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The father sent his son because he's seen there was value in his creation. You see, the gospel is more than just about sin. I mean, we try so hard not to sin. We try, we try to pray right. We try to do the right things. Amen. But knowing that, if you keep listening to that type of ministry, that type of word, you become more sin conscious than you do love conscious. And what, what freedom is there in that? Amen? So we become love conscious. We came to see the things that God had done for us. I mean, would you pay $100,000 for a car worth only 10000 Of course not. But God sent his son who died a miserable death on a cross, shed his innocent blood for all human men. Amen? Let's face it, most of us really don't start praying until we kind of have some problems. But we're not called to be problem Christians. Amen? Well, problems that we do, we face because we know there's one who answers our prayer. When we have faith in God, we know that he promised something because God doesn't lie. 
The scripture talks about let God be the truth, but let every man be the liar. When God's truth floods your heart, you begin to know things, almost like an intimate knowing, like you know your spouse. You see, it's not just about history of about religion. It's the one you want, the one you love, the one you hear lives inside of you. How many know that? See, this is intimacy. That's how you know that you know that you know, and nobody can talk it out of you, just like you know your gender. Everybody know their gender? Praise God. You know? Praise the Lord. We have to quit letting our circumstances speak louder than our truth of the scriptures. I mean, here's a thought. God only asked us to give up what we became when Adam fell, and that's something we were never really created for in the first place. I mean, we're never made for ourselves. Amen? Matthew 16, 24. We're told here to deny ourselves. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Amen? Well, that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. Because then we're used to taking care of our own self. I'm not saying you don't do those things, but I'm talking about when you serve the Lord, you have his interest in mind. See, the kingdom is a real place. It's a place of government. It's a place where it has citizens. It has a Lord that takes care of us. We've been called as ambassadors of Christ. This might seem strange, strange to some people, but when you come to the knowledge and the revelation of Jesus Christ, it begins to set you free from the trials and the temptations of this world. Now, hear what I'm not saying. You're going to go through some stuff. Amen? But when you go through it, you have someone with you. God's your best friend. He's not mad at you. He's not sitting up in heaven with his feet propped up on the desk going, I'm going to get him. No, he works with us continually it's because he made a promise, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to live inside you. He's going to show you things that you could never thought of. But also he's going to guide you and strengthen you. Amen? And with the help of the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that is impossible. What's impossible for man is not impossible for God. You see, faith is an assurance of things hoped for, but faith is something you've got to work on too. Amen? Well, God, God is working with us as we go about doing the things that he did, went about doing good. Amen? You see, the gospel is more than just about sin. Amen? The problem is a lot of Christians think they have rights. The truth is, has always been, we would deny ourselves. Or will we had an attitude, what about me? What about my rights? What about my ways? You see, there's the problem. There's nothing but the old nature that speaks like that. We all went to homeschool, but we went to the wrong school. There were the lies we accepted as truth when we conformed to the ways of the world. Thank God for good morals. Thank God for good parents. Thank God for good grandparents that taught us these things of, of life. But those things also are nothing compared to what God has given us. There's another place that you can live above your problems, your situations, and not be so overwhelmed with fear and worry. Because the enemy's putting pressure on everyone right now. Right. Wanting to give up your faith, throw in the towel, don't believe that. You know, God said it, but it hadn't happened in your time. Maybe because you didn't deserve it. Well, that's a lie. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Romans 12:2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Now, that's the problem. We've got a lot of people that know the Word of God, but there's no transformation yet. Amen? I know people have been going to church for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and still stuck in the same place waiting for God to do something. You know what I found out? He already did it. Amen? God loves us unconditionally. Amen? Before we can transform our minds, we have to make up our minds on who we're going to think like. God never said just think positive. He called us to think like his son. 1 Corinthians 2.16, that's not out there. We have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. We have, not had. As you study yourself approved unto God, God begins to fill you with this truth, this knowledge of knowing that you know that you know. Amen? I know whom I believe, and I've been persuaded that God is more able to keep that which I commit to him. What are you committed today? Well, Lord, I commit my mind. I commit my words. I commit my body. I commit my eyes and my ears. I want the things that you want. If it's not in the word of God, I don't want it. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about tradition. I'm talking about the only thing that set me free is truth. You see, that truth sometimes hard to swallow because you've been so conformed to the ways of the world. We believe what the news says rather than what the good news says. 
This is good news to people. You don't have to keep going like you've been going. The devil has been lying to you, telling you to just settle for less or get over it. God did this. God did that. That's not true. God did everything for man. Hallelujah. God never sees us for what we have done, but what we were created for. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. See, that's why the blood of Jesus is so powerful, amen? It washes away the sin and the lie. We sing songs about being free, but what are we really free from? For me, it was me-itis. You know, when I got free from me, then I got free from those who try to hurt me, who use me, try to take advantage of me, and it's no longer I that sees them, but now I can love them unconditionally because the love of God has taught me, like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Why don't they know? Because their nature hasn't been conformed or transformed yet. Amen? We don't need another religion. We don't need another church. We need a transformation. We need intimacy and encounter with the Holy Spirit to shine for Jesus. That's what you've been called to do, to go about in all the world, to yeast, to be the salt. You know, one thing I found about yeast, you know, a little bit of yeast makes that dough puff up. He gets agitated, gets aggravated, no matter how big and mad he gets. Come on, devil. He can't get rid of you. Because we know that we have the authority and power over him in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's all about authority. Right, Brother David? Brother David went and encountered the enemy and his, his family over the weekend. He called me up and said, he gave me a little testimony. And he said, you know, Pastor, I went in and I took authority over that spirit of death in my aunt. I said, go ahead. He said, it's the first time I'd done that in 30 years. I didn't know I could do it. And he prayed the prayer of faith. He binded that spirit of death. He loosed life. And he said, you shall live and not die. Come on, Brother David. Boy, oh, that, that's David. Those who know David, a man of steel, come on. <laughs> Stand up, take a bow in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, inspiration, right? And that, that same gift, that same Holy Spirit is in every believer. Right. Nothing's impossible. Right. When's the last time you stepped out in faith? Well, I tried that stuff, Pastor. Yeah, you tried it. But God doesn't just try things. He succeeds because all he needs is a little bit more effort. A little bit one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, what am I free from? A person without Jesus doesn't really know how to love. His nature is self-centered, self-serving. The Bible says in the end that he'll be a lover of self. It's amazing how some of us even know that we've been forgiven, but yet can't show the same type of forgiveness toward others. Yeah, it's getting a little deep. We know we've got to forgive some people. Amen? Just forgive them. In other words, cancel the debt. Tear it up. They're not gonna, they don't owe you anything. And how you know is if you had a chance to get them back and you were all by yourself, you wouldn't. That's forgiveness. That's forgiveness. Amen? Well, I'm trying to forgive. No, what you're really saying, you don't want to forgive. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, let me ask you this. Do you know what others are going through or what they've been through? And why do we make our go-throughs worse than what Jesus went through? When you look at me, do you, do you see all the hurt and rejection and violence I went through growing up? No, you know why? Because it's not my story. It's not my going through. My story began when I met Jesus, and I've been following him ever since. Amen. The devil wants you to use an excuse not to go forward. But that's a big lie, too. I used to think other people were the reason for most of my problems. If God would just fix them, I would be a better person. You know, one of the most requested prayers I have is people come up, Pastor, will you pray for them to remove my boss at work? I said, no. How about we pray you grow up into Christ? How about we pray that you be strong in the Lord and the power of his might? How about we pray that you pray for that person, that they may have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and that your love fill those hallways? Well, I don't want that. Well, that's all I can pray. i got to pray the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Used to think all that thing. But did the gospel change just because we've had bad experiences or bad parents or bad childhood? 
You know, I was in the Christian bookstore the other day, and I seen a, there was a bunch of books written by why God doesn't do this and why God doesn't do that. Why are they always trying to change the gospel? I thank God Jesus didn't read those books. Amen? Because he wrote the book. Amen? The Bible says there were so many things that he did that wasn't enough books that it could contain all the great things that he had done. There's this, there's this thing inside of you, this, this knowledge that you have, this understanding. People perish because they, they lack the understanding or they lack the knowledge, but what it is, they just won't step out. You know what I notice? A turtle's got to stick his neck out a little bit to make some progress. Any turtles in the house? When's the last time you stuck your neck out? Amen? But what if it don't happen? What if it does? What if I fall? But what if you don't? What if I get a revelation? Now, there you go. What if I get a place that I know that I know that I know? You see, God's proud of you. Amen? There's no fear in the gospel. God settled it all. Amen? That's why we don't always need everything to go right. All we need is to be more like him and all the things will work out for the good. The reason why there's so many Christians in trouble is because we don't see the value in ourselves and the price that was paid for on the cross. We keep bowing down to the things we're supposed to be dead to when God promised a new life in him. When people don't see the good in themselves, they live only up to the level that others have said about them. Keep hearing those voices, those words, those things they said 30, 40, 50 years ago. Why are we carrying that? Be free in God, amen? There are a lot of people who are driven by nothing more than what people said about them. Come on, you know you're worth more than that to God, especially if you're a Christian. <laughs> One of the goals of our Heavenly Father, not just give us eternal life, but to restore his image of love back in us. Adam was cut off from the source of love, and ever since then, man has been reduced to needing to be loved, and now man is looking for love in all the wrong places. Sound like a country song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Why is it so easy because of what people do to us? Why are we crying out because of what people do to us rather than cry for them? You know why? Because our nature of sin has taught us to think more about ourselves. Are we going to continue to allow the hurts of yesterday to decide our todays? Are we going to continue to allow the hurts of yesterdays to decide our todays? Why do some people believe the more the stuff they go through, the stronger their faith will be? That's a lie. Again, please don't hear what I'm not saying. You, you'll go through things. And I'm sorry that you've been through some terrible things, but that's not who you are. Amen? The Bible says, come out amongst them. Be separated. When people see you, do they see light in you? When they hear you, do they hear words of inspiration, encouragement? The Bible says in the end times, it'll be those of the, of the light, the little sons of God. There goes one. There goes one. They're going to run up to us. They're going to say, why is your face so strong? Why are you acting like that? I know you've been in trouble. I know that you've had this. I know you're going through all this sickness, but you've got a, a smile on your face. Because I know who I believe. And I am persuaded that he is more than able. See, God's more than able. Amen. And when's God good? Like all the time. Just like your parents, your grandparents. You know, if you're young, they're good all the time. Amen? Praise God. If we keep letting life and circumstances tell us what to believe, then we are creating nothing more than an army of worriers and doubters. I call them kind of Job comforters. Any Job comforters in the house? No, there's none of those here. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, Bible scholars. We use that excuse right off when we go through something, when Jesus already took it. Amen? Praise God. But if you know Jesus, then you know that Jesus' life is now your life, and the truth has set you free, free from the lie. John 8, 36, for he who has the Son is free. Amen? He who has the Son is free. Amen? I like to add, the scripture says, indeed, you say. Yes, Amen? You know, God could have easily just put a castle or a kingdom up in the sky. He could have done that way to prove himself. You know, and then as you grow up, you're walking with mom and dad, and, and, 
And the little child goes, look, Mommy, that's, that's where God lives. But God didn't do it that way. You know what God did? Wow. Mommy, Daddy, look, that's where God lives. Yeah. Not where, that's where God goes to church. Yeah. That's where God lives. That's where God lives. Right. Scripture says he's in us. Yeah. Well, you get a revelation of that. You'll be walking around thinking, you know what? With like David. I got the authority in Jesus' name. I've been sent to help, deliver, set captives free, lay hands on the sick, and yeah, even cast out some demons. All in Jesus' name because he gets the glory. He gets the power. It's all what Jesus did, not what you do. We just want to be obedient. See, I get to do this. You say, well, you're a pastor. No, no, no. We're sons and daughters of God. Your name is written in heaven just like mine. God has no favorites but my wife. Amen? I like to think, Lord, the apple doesn't fall from the tree now. He said, yeah, you're good too, son. But what about me? What about me? Yeah, what about you? What about you? Well, he says you're more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror. And then you, you have this, this knowing, this, this, your spirit relates to your human spirit that you are. You are. You are a son of God. You're not just saved to go, to, to go back to heaven. You're saved to reflect the kingdom and shine for Jesus in this world so people can see the goodness of the Lord living inside you. It's a lot of responsibility. You know, we like to get ourselves fit. We like to get ourselves in good shape, eat the right foods. Amen? And there's good things about that. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen? We're free. You don't owe any man nothing but to love him. You, you, you see what I'm saying? You don't owe anything to anyone but to love them. Amen? Because it was love that died on that cross. Amen? Praise the Lord. Why do we want something from God if we can't become what he wants us to be? And when we read our Bibles, we'll find out we were never created to be Christians for ourselves, but for God's glory. God's glory. Wow. God's glory. You're the best God's got. You're the best God's got. You're not on second string. You're not sitting on the bench. You're in it. You're on it. He chose you long ago before you were even in your mother's womb. You had your fun. You had your time. Now it's time to come. Just like you are. Don't try to get all your ducks in a row because the devil will definitely mess that up. Don't wait till you're all clean, till you're all these things because God doesn't. God wants to take what you have, and give what he has. Who got the better deal? Yeah, it's, it's just an offering. Yeah, and there's some sacrifice, you know. But with that comes what? A conditioning, a transformation. And you get into a place of trouble and the Holy Spirit goes, here's the answer. You see, the Bible is all the answers to life. If you would just look at that like, you know, I know a person that was studying the, all the manuals to, to do nursing. Oh, books and books. I thought, whoa. If you'll tell you the Bible with that, you'll be a powerhouse when you go in there. Yeah. Amen? Because God takes the good of the things of the world and he just magnifies them and gives you the tools of the trade so that you can do the things that he did. And not only that, he does them through you. We're not alone. Amen? God never left us alone. Where's Miss Maddie at? <laughs> Is she coming? <laughs> Amen? Amen? The Bible says one must be born again or he cannot see. He doesn't mean blinded. What he means is you can't understand the things of God. Now, being born again means actually being born from above. That's the transformation. When you ask Jesus into your heart, it's, a, it's just a, a, a simple prayer. But it's so simple, it changed your life. You know? Jesus, come into my heart. Change me. How many, like, how many like where they're at right now? Oh, let's put it this way. How many want to be blessed? Raise your hand if you want to be blessed. If your hand's not up, I'll take your blessing. Yeah, you know, the gospel's more than just about blessings. You do know that, huh? Yeah, it's about giving yourself to God so he can give you what you need so he can get his will done. We used to think, well, Lord, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be what you want me to be, uh, and I want you to uh, kind of help me with my will so I can do your will. We want our will done. Then we do God's will. Nobody here. Yeah. Amen? 
So many people complain about what's going on in America. You know, we're losing our freedom. Well, when you think about it, you really don't have freedom when you come into Christ. You have the freedom to praise him, the freedom to acknowledge him, the freedom to preach the gospel, the freedom to go about doing those things of God. You see, before I became a child of God, it was normal for me to be angry, normally for me to stand my ground. But you know what I found out? In the kingdom of heaven, that's not normal. You know what's normal in the kingdom of heaven? To forgive those you think don't deserve it. To be quick to forgive, not to hold judgment, being critical or fault finding. Those things were under the blood. Those Jesus died for that stuff. Now, I'm not saying your emotions don't get the best of you sometimes, but we're not supposed to be led by our emotions. We're supposed to be led by the Spirit. You say, well, what's the Spirit? Well, it's, it's the Word of God, the truth. The only thing that sets you free is truth. Amen. We don't need another president. We don't need another government. We need a nature change. God wasn't elected, wasn't voted in. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, he said. Wow. We get to do that. Through how? The demonstration. Right? Through our walk daily, through our attitudes through our love. You know, I know you all know a lot of people who seem to start off the race like racehorses and then they kind of dry up at the end. Could it be that maybe they've lost their first love? Nobody here. But I know everyone here just loves the Lord. Amen? Loves God. Want to be what God wants you to be. Amen? Now, Jesus was sent for many things. But the one thing I know that he was sent for was to prove it, that the Father, love is unconditional. You should pray this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, you can say it underneath your breath. I choose to forgive all those who've hurt me, taken advantage of me, or used me in any way. I cancel the debt. And Lord, if I've done that to anyone else, I repent. I thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. You see, that, that wasn't hard. That was simple. You know? A lot of us have been carrying some stuff, but you don't have to leave, lay it down at the altar today. Now, Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed. You ever been oppressed? You ever been depressed? Oppressed? Those things are like the real to people. But God wants to set you free today. Hallelujah. You know? He's here because you brought him with you. I hear people, oh, Lord, I didn't like going to that church. The spirit wasn't moving. Well, that's your fault. You didn't let him out. Come on. Let him out. Let him out. Come and taste how good the Lord is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you spiritually, physically, and mentally, and financially. Is there anything we need to announce? Uh, make sure to keep Pastor Jerry and his wife in prayer on the way. And uh, go out and do something for the Lord this week. Right, yeah. Amen. Take, take what you heard and put it to practice. We also have Wednesday night service. Is that right? You need to come because God passes out outlines there. Then you're really going to be accountable. Yeah. Amen. All right. Love you. Say, say, say goodbye to somebody you don't know.